Hello and welcome to Business Today Television. I am Siddharth Zarabi and with me Rajiv Memani, the chairman of EY in India. Welcome uh, to our studio here. Um, Rajiv, uh, you've been here just a few hours uh, on day one um, and uh, the thing that you must have noticed is what's the mood like yeah. in uh, this time around. So why don't we start with your views on that? Yeah, no, no, uh, Siddharth, thank you so much. Uh, Yes, I've been here for a few years, but a few hours, but uh, you know, I've had a good sense of what's happening and met quite a few people. Uh, my sense is that things are slightly more positive from last year. When we come last year, uh, you know, the issues around inflation, interest rates, uh, the wars uh, were all there, and people were really thinking that it will be a kind of a hard landing and hard recession, uh, and. Honestly, all those scenarios did play out and in fact the geopolitical situation actually worsened than what people, you had other wars that started coming in and other conflicts. Uh, but people feel that, you know, economy, global economy still grew by 3%. So pe because of that, people are feeling a bit more positive. Uh, the view that, uh, uh, you know, interest rates are now softening, at least people think, timing may vary, you know, maybe more later during the year than earlier in the year because you know, central banks will be more conservative. Um, you know, the uh, people are starting to factor in conflicts, although it is still a big concern on supply chain costs and everything else. Uh, interest rates uh, are, are, you know, people know they are peaked and it's a question of when they tend to come down. Stock markets globally have sort of done well. So there is more positivity than, 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 uh, than last year. Uh, people are more uh, positive. Uh, I think last year, the personal balance sheets of people, the uh, companies' balance sheets, uh, uh, you know, the job losses were not as much. Uh, so, so overall, there was the economies group and companies showed a lot of resilience. So people think a little bit of that will continue. It's still not gaga that we want to come out, invest and everything else. But they still, people are still conservative, but they feel that they're gradually, it's a soft landing and they're gradually getting out of it. They still worry around job, job, you know, job losses, uh, you know, the U.S. economy will probably slow down, you know, their 2.8% growth, they're anticipating they'll have some 1.3, 1.4, 1.5% in that range. Uh, you know, Europe is looking better, but, you know, Germany and some parts, pockets of Europe may have, a, uh, may have some issues. So overall, I would say people are cautious, uh, but probably more optimistic than where they were last year. And they think gradually they can see interest rates, inflation, uh, you know, things getting better. I think geopolitical, geopolitics, AI and other issues are still sort of around there. Well, uh, that's a very nice uh, comprehensive uh, uh, overview and I want to uh, take up one of the points. You spoke about global growth and uh, for a lot of our viewers, they will uh, uh, figure out that India is growing at double the rate of uh, the global growth and continue to show resilience. Yeah. What's the mood uh, for India yeah. in the global community? See, I think move for India is, is, is very positive. So people, uh, the Indian story is known. Uh, so when you meet people, you know, people will ask, so what's happening? Uh, do you think this will continue? Is it for real? Uh, and then when people go in, in the details of it, uh, I think it's, it's really interesting to see, uh, you know, once you start talking about a particular sector, uh, you know, how uh, there is clarity in thought process, uh, in what the policy should be, what the regulatory framework should be, the macroeconomic resilience in the economy. So apart from the, you know, 7% plus growth, uh, the strong macroeconomic fundamentals, I think the resilience piece and really the credibility of India, I, I think that's coming through much more. And now people are trying to say, okay, if we want to accelerate and increase, you know, how do we do it? And depending on the sector you are in, the place that you are playing in, uh, you know, there, there are always, it's not that easy. I mean, for a company that wants to invest in India, Indian market valuations are high. It's not that easy to just come and just come and invest. So the, the challenge is not the story. I think the story is getting clearer and I think it will get clearer over months. The, the challenge is now, okay, how do we do it? Mm. And, you know, you, and the, you get into, for example, you get into a sector, like you talk about what's happening in sustainability, in green, and you talk about the, the, the actions that the government has taken, what they are doing, 
uh, the policy steps that have been taken and people understand the clarity on that. On data also, I think there's clarity on which way the Indian government is going. Uh, within the landscape, what are the sectors uh, that uh, have the maximum uh, interest? Uh, and I'm not referring to startups, we'll probably try and yeah. talk about that later. Yeah. See, I think just from, a, uh, just from capital deployment, so, I mean, you can take it through different parameters. Lots of multinational companies want to invest in uh, industrials. Manufacturing is definitely coming back. So, people are looking at manufacturing in a, in a big way. Consumer has always been a story in India, but consumer is becoming more and more of a domestic business. Uh, so, you know, how do you get in if you're not there already is the, is the big challenge. But manufacturing for sure. But in terms of big dollars, it's infrastructure. Uh, it's about, uh, uh, you know, even financial services. But it's about how do you play the infrastructure game? How do you play the green energy game? Uh, how do you take big positions there? So if you're looking at the billions uh, or in the hundreds of millions, then I think that's the place. And that's also true. I mean, if you look at even the Indian map of where capital is going, big capital, not volumes, but in dollar terms. I think that's where it's going in a, in a, in a very, very chunky way. So I think they're really trying to see, okay, what's the policy what how is what is the supply side support what's the fiscal support how does it compare with what's happening in europe how does it compare with ira what is india's competitiveness in manufacturing on some of these areas uh, where is how is the green hydrogen cost curve likely to come in uh, you know what's the uptake of green hydrogen can india be used for export and others the entire renewable value chain how do you play the renewable value chain so i think that's where especially the financial investors large sponsors even some of the big strategics. That's where I would say in terms of dollar terms, that's the biggest piece. Tech companies always look at India. India has always been a strong uh, play, playground for them. They're well established. At least the big ones are well established. So they, they, they. Uh, how significant is the infrastructure piece? And, uh, you know, while China has massive amounts of infrastructure, a lot of it is unused. Just in the recent past few weeks, we've seen uh, news around the new Bengaluru airport, for example, the recent uh, new sea link in Mumbai, the constructions uh, that are happening in the NCR. What kind of message uh, does that send overseas? Because s some years ago, you would remember, Rajiv, yeah. a project would be announced and then yeah. litigation was the only yeah, thing absolutely. that would come out of it. You know, people hear the numbers, but I would say when they visit, they get a feel of it. So infrastructure is, you can hear the numbers, you can see, and you can even talk about how road capacity is going up, the investments that are happening in railways, uh, the electric side of railways, what's happening, renewable ports, airports, you have the Bangalore airport, you have the Mumbai airport, a uh, number of new other airports that are sort of, you know, getting renovated, capacity going up. I think you get that, but I, I would still say people, I think it's a very good appetizer for people to really want you to come and see what's really happening on the ground. And I think the you feel the optimism here, but I think the uh, uh, that the, the and and how the 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 good thing about India is that you know obviously government is front ending some of this because of the way they have done the budget allocation, but a lot of this is also being run by the private sector on economic terms. So I think it's not infrastructure that's being built way ahead of its time. I think it's an infrastructure that is being done on very built out on very commercial strong commercial background. Uh, expand on that because there are some people who uh, know that the government has been doing most of the heavy lifting on capex yeah. and there were questions around the private sector yeah. till some years back they were sitting on the sidelines there were various reasons including the banking financing yeah. issue yeah. how is it changing now so yeah. i think it's changing in different ways so obviously government is is doing the bulk heavy lifting there's no doubt about that private sector is still I mean, everyone's hopeful that it will come, it will come, and people can see signs of coming uh, when you look at uh, what companies, as we experience what individual companies are doing, it's definitely coming. But on some of the large infrastructure projects, for example, on uh, on ports or on airports, uh, you know, a lot of these being done on commercial basis. Roads also, the day government wants to dispose of some of the roads that they are building, uh, toll roads and everything, there's enough appetite for that. There's never been enough, not... The entire renewable piece that's been built in. You, you sense there is an appetite in the government to do that, uh, monetize the... They will have to at some stage. I think they'll have to bring in... I think it's a very smart way of taking the risk up front, building the roads and then getting the upside and then recycling that money back for developing further. And we'll have to wait for clarity and further steps once the general elections are over. I'm oh, just yes, guessing, yeah, uh, you know, the course. broader macro political environment. Yeah, yeah absolutely right.
Okay. okay. You, you were talking about the green space. Yeah, even in green, I mean, if you look at renewable and everything else, I mean, a lot of that is being built out. If you look at green hydrogen, $300 billion plus more of private capital, I mean, between public sector units and, and private industry, committing that kind of capital. Uh, I think that's a, those are very significant, uh, very significant numbers. And, and do you think there's an element of risk involved in these bets? Uh, we've had those conversations with various players and all of them are trying to do it, but... Uh, it's not easy. I mean, I think, but if I look at the example of, you know, solar energy starting at 11 rupees and coming down to do something, uh, you know, telecom prices, you know, you have been, you've tracked that sector for a long time, starting from where and coming down to where. I think hydrogen and, and, and parts of the other value chain are, people are anticipating. Obviously, the cost curves today uh, don't lead to demand and a lot of people would say this is a lot of hype, uh, which may well be true, but you are, you are seeing innovations that are coming. You're seeing people taking bets on domestic manufacturing. Uh, you're seeing uh, places where the ecosystem is now developing. So it'll take time, but I think India has no way out, uh, Siddharth. There is no, I mean, for us, that is the way out. You can't, we, are, we, we import 40% of our primary energy needs today. Yeah. If our, and there are no uh, major oil wells yeah, left yeah. to dig <laughs> in if some. Our, if, if our private per capita income goes up to, uh, you know, by 5x, uh, you know, in the next 25 years, and with affluence, you know, your per capita energy, energy consumption goes up. You know, we'll bankrupt the world if you don't build some of these things. Obviously, biofuels are there and how they are being used. Uh, that's also important. Uh, and that's also all, every small piece counts. Absolutely. I was just talking with uh, Mr. R.C. Bhargav recently. He said, uh, from a user perspective, various technologies. So that's also absolutely yeah. right that different kinds of fuels yeah. will uh, coexist. Uh, how's the m and outlook for 2024? Because we've seen in earlier cycles that what, once you come out of a bit of a trouble spot, uh, consolidation becomes uh, reasonable because valuations fall. So how's the broader m and outlook this no, year? I think broader m and outlook is good. I think there will be consolidation uh, that's happening. Balance sheets are very strong. Mm -hmm. uh, people are getting more and more focused in terms of what they're doing. I think the biggest challenge is capital markets valuation. So for anyone who's coming in, uh, for seller, that's the right expectation to have. For a buyer, a lot of times he feels, you know, how is he going to juice out the return? So, from I can see a lot of private equity funds wanting to exit, uh, you know, monetize some of the investments through the capital markets route, which has happened in the last eight nine months. Uh, I can see that trend continuing uh, significantly. Uh, in terms of fresh investments, yes, they will come and they'll happen. But the only the speed is not India's potential. The speed is not the ability of India to guzzle in the cash. I think the speed impact on or consolidation impact is is largely on uh, the uh, how do you ma balance the uh, the valuation uh, metric. But but in spite of that, I would say domestic consolidation and in many cases you are now seeing uh, Indian companies also leading some of those domestic consolidation that's happening. Uh, also, global strategics are now we are seeing they are becoming much more active. Uh, in looking at uh, and getting more comfortable with valuations in India. Now, valuations in India generally are a few multiples, and I'm being very conservative and I'm saying few multiples higher, <laughs> multiple multiples higher, and there is higher growth, but 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 still to be comfortable with that kind of valuation, uh, it takes time. Uh, uh, some would say that these valuations are just the uh, price or entry cost that you pay for a potential market like India. Yeah, I mean that time will tell. But yes, I agree. That is, and people who have taken those bets, I think most of them have done well. But you have to do that, uh, you know, having a base case in mind and seeing how do you build the growth over this. And people are willing to, definitely willing to take that. Uh, take and that. perhaps only the bravest can do that. Can do that yeah. Okay, uh, you know, last year... Uh, uh, EY announced that it was going back on a plan to split and uh, obviously it would have had an impact in India as well. That's behind us. Yeah. But for you and the firm, what's the sort of core focus areas uh, this year? Yeah, I mean that didn't change our focus last year also. So I think we were quite focused on what we did uh, last year. I think... Uh, not also for the partners who perhaps were uh, no, no, <laughs> looking no. at an upside. <laughs> no, they may be looking at an upside, but I think uh, it only prodded them to work harder to, so that the upside was higher. Hmm. But uh, but I think the uh, overall uh, uh, our focus, you know, India is a high growth market. Uh, entrepreneurs are, uh, are are demanding clients, so just ensuring, and also they want the leading edge stuff. So it's seeing how we are using technology to help create more values uh, for our clients to transform businesses. 
uh, to infuse technology in everything that we do, whether it's audit, whether it's risk, whether mm. it's uh, a tax, whether it's supply chain, uh, you know, that's very, very important. We are very active in the uh, transactions business uh, and that, you know, continues to grow and, you know, and companies are focused more and more trying to say how do they create more value, which is through operational improvement, better risk, higher levels of governance. And, and for us, what's most important is how do we improve the quality of the work that we're doing. Uh, in, in a high growth environment, uh, where there is uh, so much of more mass-based capital market participation that is happening, I think one has to be also very sit back and also be very cautious. Absolutely. To say that, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know. How do you ensure that uh, there, there are no, you know, there are no visible accidents around? Absolutely. Uh, one final question: We are, uh, uh, you know, two weeks away from the budget. It's going to be an interim budget, but in some ways, it is ten years of Modinomics, and the markets, uh, among others, are looking for another five years. So, from your perspective, uh, what can this interim budget? Uh, do and what 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 are you looking forward to in terms of the focus areas? See, I would say uh, I am looking forward to the macroeconomic numbers. Uh, what's the growth uh, projections for next year? Deficit, are there so more policy? I'm not I'm not looking at I'm I'm looking at a at a budget that will have a very strong report card. Yeah, not a big bang. Yeah, I I'm looking for a budget that will have guidance for the next year and maybe a sort of broader future guidance. Uh, they will, they, they potentially will be some things uh, for the uh, sort of wider, uh, you know, middle income, low to middle income, uh, uh, you know, people who have been caught up with inflation and other things and where savings have been dipped into to provide some relief to them uh, through direct tax measures or maybe some indirect tax measures. But I'm not expecting anything big bang. I think, I, 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 I think uh, the big bang stuff, uh, you know, will probably come... Uh, when the main budget in is done post election, so we we will probably get you uh, in the interim budget yeah. and when the full budget happens in July. Rajiv so Memani, you. thank you very much thank for you your very time. Much. With that, it's a wrap on this conversation with Rajiv Memani, one of the foremost people who understands all things business in India. If you've been, thank you very much for watching.